All right, this is number two from the 2008 Calculus A, B, and B, C exams, and it's a problem where you are given a table of values and you have to do a bunch of stuff. Technically, it's a calculator problem, but uh, it's not. other than like adding and subtracting, there's not much you're going to do with a calculator, so I'm going to do it by hand here. Um, so L prime of 5.5. Uh, well, actually, you're asked to estimate the rate at which people are um, waiting in line is changing, um, and L of T is the number of people in line, so we're asked to really find L prime of... 5.5, um, and that's going to be a difference quotient, so L of 7 minus L of 4, so you go 1 to the left, 1 to the right, um, even though it's not kind of, uh, yeah, actually that is symmetric, um, even if it wasn't, you would go 1 to the left and 1 to the right, uh, one unit on the table, I'm saying, and that gives us, pulling the values, and here I'd use my calculator, 8, and then I have to include units, so the numerator has units of people, and the denominator has units of hours. So people per hour. Um, the next question is a trapezoidal sum to approximate the average number of people waiting in line. So average value of a function is the integral um, divided by the interval, which is 4 minus 0. So now I have to approximate that. So that's approximately 1 fourth. Don't forget that 1 fourth. People do that all the time. Um, so now I'm using a trapezoidal sum, so one half, and then uh, the base in this case is from, or the height rather, is from zero to one, so that's one, and then uh, those are the two bases, so I add those up, and then plus the one half, and I'm going from one to three in this case, so two, and then I want to add up those, and then another one half, I'm going from 3 to 4, so 1, and then I need those two values. Alright, and now I would punch this. Actually, you can just leave this and put the units at the end, so the units would just be people. But I'm going to punch it into my calculator and get 155.25 and people. Alright, um, question C here is, uh, we have to determine the number of times that L prime of t must equal 0, the fewest number of times. So uh, I'm going to make my argument based on um, how many maximums and minimums it must have. So you can see it increases there, increases there, decreases there. So it went from increasing to decreasing. It must have had a maximum. Um, and then it starts increasing again. So it went from decreasing to increasing. So it must have had a minimum. And then it goes from increasing to decreasing. So it must have a maximum. All right, so what I'm going to do to justify that is I'm going to use continuity. So it's twice differentiable, so I know that it must be continuous. And now I'm just going to kind of construct that argument. So I'm going to say that um, L of 3 is greater than L of 1, which is definitely true. And I know that L of 4 is less than L of 3. And if that's the case, since it's a continuous function, L of t must have had a uh, relative maximum or a local maximum somewhere on the interval between 1 and 4. And I'm going to do that two more times. So L of 3 is greater than L of 4, um, which we know is true. And also, L of 7 is greater than L of 4. Um, and therefore, L of t must have had a local or relative minimum somewhere on the interval between 3 and 7. And one more time. Gives me L of 4 is less than L of 7, and L of 7 is greater than L of 8, and therefore L of t must have had a relative maximum, or a local maximum, somewhere on the interval between 0 and 8. And since all I can guarantee are that there are three relative extrema, um, I know that L prime of t must equal 0 at each of them, so the minimum number of times would be 3. Um, and that's the argument that I would make. There are a lot of different arguments that you can make, and all of them are a lot of writing. Um, so I like this one because I don't have to um, calculate anything, really. You can use mean value theorem. Um, you would use Rolle's theorem. A lot of options there, but I think this was the easiest one, or at least the least writing. Um, the next part is uh, compared to part C. This part's kind of a joke. So you're given a function... And you're told that it is a function that tells you the rate of change of 
uh, the rate at which tickets were sold in tickets per hour. And based on that, we have to determine how many tickets were sold between 0 and 3 to the nearest whole number. So, I mean, that's like one last shot where you have to pay attention. But uh, it should just be if I integrate R of T, dt, um, that'll tell me the number of tickets, right? I'm integrating tickets per hour over hours, so I get tickets. Uh, punch that into my calculator, and I get 972.784 to three decimal places, because you should always go to three decimal places. But then you should always read the question and see what they're asking for. It says to the nearest whole number. So the number of tickets sold is 973. And that's the answer. So that's the whole problem. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.